The Punch TV. From the suspension, I'm told the suspension was to be for one hour. Uh, it's taking longer than that. I understand why, because there were a few discussions behind the scene, the usual channels of communication. But I think it's right and proper for me to thank all of you for holding on the fort in my absence. I had to lead a delegation to attend a conference on behalf of the Parliament of Ghana, and in fact, Ghana, a very, very important conference, a global council for political renewal Global Council for Political Renewal. I had key members, including the former Majority Leader, Honorable Osei Chairman Sabunsu, to ably support me at the conference. I just arrived this afternoon. And since today is the last day of the sitting of the House for this meeting, I rushed to come to support you and well. I've been giving a lot of brief by leadership and my able Deputy Second, Second Deputy Speaker, who I'm extremely grateful to for holding on the fort. I know the First Deputy Speaker was very, very busy. It forms part of a series of actions that undermine the legislative process. As you may recall, I addressed this House on the 22nd of December 2023, in a formal statement. The purpose of that statement was to draw your attention to the President's refusal to assent to four critical bills passed by this House. Three private members' bills and one public bill. During that debate, sorry, during that address, I underscored the troubling nature of the President's justification for his actions, or rather, the lack thereof, particularly highlighting that his failure to ascend on grounds of alleged unconstitutionality paradoxically stood in violation of the very Constitution he invoked. Despite the gravity of this matter, it is disheartening to note that there has been no progress in rectifying the situation concerning those significant pieces of legislation. They remain in a state of limbo, unretained to Parliament, detained by him, and unacted upon following the President's communication, which lacked substantial legal justification. This ongoing scenario poses a grave threat to our legislative authority and, by extension, the democratic principles we should try to uphold. The implications of such executive actions 
extend far beyond the immediate legislative items at hand. They erode the foundational checks and balances that our forebearers painstakingly established to ensure a vibrant and functioning democracy. When important legislative work, the product of rigorous debate and consensus building within this House, is disregarded without just cause, it not only disrespects the legislative branch, but also disenfranchises the citizens that we are sworn to serve. This blatant disregard for legislative processes and constitutional mandates risk setting a perilous precedent that could weaken the very fabric of our governance structure. Honorable members, on 19th March 2024, my attention was drawn to a letter issued by the Executive Secretary to the President, Nana Asante Bediotu, addressed to the clerk to Parliament, which letter is clearly, in my opinion, contemptuous of Parliament. The letter outlined that the clerk ought to, and I quote, cease and desist unquote, from attempting to transmit the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill 2024 to the President for necessary action in accordance with the provisions of our Constitution. In the said letter, the Executive Secretary indicated that the Office of the President was aware of two pending applications for an order of interlocutory injunction seeking to restrain the clerk and from transmitting the bill to the president. It further indicated that the Honorable Attorney General had on 18th March 2024 informed the president that he had received the two applications and had advised the president not to take any step in relation to the bill until matters raised by the suit are determined by the Supreme Court. As a result, the President, via the Executive Secretary, conveyed, conveyed to the clerk that it was unable to accept transmission of the bill. Honorable Members, my attention has also been drawn to the 18th March 2024 letter from the Honorable Attorney General being referred to by the Executive Secretary to the President, Nana Asante, video two above. In the said letter, that is the letter from the Attorney General, I note that the Attorney General used the phrase, and I quote, I will respectfully advise that a decision to assent to the bill be made after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction, unquote, and not an advice to the president not to receive the bill from parliament. It is therefore interesting that in view of this clear and unambiguous advice from the attorney general, which I disagree with to the President, the President has rather chosen to accept the bill. In the face of these developments, it is important for us as a House to reflect upon the manner in which these events have unfolded. On the 28th of February 2024, this August House took a decisive step in passing the bill, a move that was a culmination of rigorous debate 
thoughtful deliberations and the collective will of the representatives of the people. Following this, the bill underwent the customary process of cross-checking, which is an important procedure designed to ensure that all amendments and changes proposed during the legislative process were accurately incorporated. After the successful processes were done with, the clerk to Parliament fulfilling his duties as the procedure intermediary between the legislative and executive branches and there to send the bill to the President in accordance with Section 5 of the Interpretation Act 2009, Act 792. This action, steeped in established parliamentary practice and procedure, signifies the final step in the legislative process, enabling the President to review and if assent to the bill, thereby enacting it into law in accordance with Article 1067 of the Constitution. The refusal to accept the bill for transmission did not occur in isolation, but persisted across multiple attempts with the third attempt to transmit the bill forming the basis of the letter I have previously alluded to. So three occasions to serve the bill. In fact, the Constitution used the word present the bill to the President. Failed. Notably, the President's refusal to accept the transmission of the bill has not been formally communicated to this House through the established channels of official correspondence from the President to this House. The absence of an official communication to the House regarding the President's refusal is troubling, yet it does not diminish the gravity of the situation nor our responsibility to address it. You no know, communication from the President to the House is through the Speaker. Nothing like that has been done. The contents of the letter, albeit not formally presented to us, have come to our attention, compelling us to confront the issues it raises. It is a matter of great concern the executive branch has chosen to disregard the established constitutional structures that constructive dialogue and collaboration between the branches of government. In light of these circumstances, it is incumbent on this House to stand united in its response to affront to this affront to the legislative authority vested in Parliament by the Constitution and the people we serve. We must articulate a collective voice that unequivoc unequivocally condemns the disregard for our constitutional structures and reaffirms our commitment to uphold the rule of law. This situation calls for a principled stance, emphasizing the importance of adherence to the procedures and norms that govern our democratic institutions. The map of the Akwababa, Mansai Media College. Mansai Media College is a school, power, a church TV so, and a radio so, you may die. Ah, yes, you are a book, Massey, a tone suit. Baby, you will be our person about Mansai Media College. Now the whom you media e din honma. Yen tie you media e dino amansai media college. Se usia bribi wo media mu. 
and now opese ohunu bibi bia wa fa media ho enso eche kwa amanse media college oh homam e wa atwetwe fo wa kwadri ye wa de twemu na in studio ni ye news room die e di twemu won sam twemu no ye twe bibi ti se kase ebo akenkan ni sinitwa ni bebua e keka ho wa multimedia mu nso ye twe bibi ti se sini mfoni asiesie mfoni twa ni bebua e keka ho ye betumi nso aboa wo ama wo de na wo twepe asunya bribi wo nkita ho die adwuma ahodo nyina mu esan se ye wo yan kasa yan kasa foni nti abue biara ye ma yan adesua fo kwan ma wo kɔ yɔ de ya twe wo adesua dan mu no ahwe fo ehu e ka me e se obi biara wo ne bosom twe ase enim abakɔsɛma e fa nsu ehu menya abofra kitu abi wo ha ɔno so se onim abakɔsɛma e fa leg bosom twe ho abusua fo ye mama kwa ba e ba gana pages tv so emra son se ya the trending issues ne kɔsɔ e wo abɛ fo tentan fidie ne so e bɛ som mo me din na na eje wa akode amansan media college e ma o de o we hia bia wo nkuta hodie mu